Okay, so the first day of the convention is done. The platform and candidates have been unanimously adopted by the delegates, and the general consensus was that the audience believes in the promise of America. For the first time that I can remember in modern political history, we had the nominee come out the first night of the convention. Usually they save the nominee for the fourth night as the big finale, but the vice president came out on night one and spoke to the future she hopes to lead us into, and to honor the fact that we have a chance to go there because of the work and grace of President Joe Biden. The arena erupted in enthusiastic agreement to this. She looked beautiful, she spoke effortlessly, and she knew the exact right amount of time to really give a kickoff to the night, just short and sweet. Other highlights of the evening included Golden State Warriors head coach Steve Kerr, who had just come off coaching the U.S. gold medal winning Olympic men's basketball team, but had also spent the past few years as an enthusiastic supporter of democracy. Kerr acknowledged that it feels like speaking up about politics these days comes with risks. But he knew as soon as he was asked to speak at this event that as an American citizen, he needed to say yes. To be honest, Kerr was kind of a surprising highlight of the night for me. I'm not a sports person, but he was an excellent ambassador for Team Democracy. Here was this man speaking where the Chicago Bulls play, a team he played with in the famous Michael Jordan years, now up here on a political stage talking about leadership. He said that leaders must display dignity that they must tell the truth and be able to laugh at themselves, that leaders must care about the people that they're leading and profess knowledge and expertise, but with the awareness that none of us have all the answers and that the answers often come from members of the team. He said, these are the kind of qualities we look for in our bosses, in our friends, in our coworkers. Then why shouldn't we want the same qualities in our president? And when we look at it that way, there really should be no contest between the two presidential tickets. Sean Fain, president of the United Auto Workers, made an excellent speech that didn't pull any punches on Trump, actively calling him a scab and quoting the Nelly song saying, it's getting hot in here. And then he took off his jacket and he was wearing a shirt that said, Trump is a scab, vote Harris. And the pro-worker, pro-union, pro-American crowd just went wild. Ultimately, the major point of Sean Fain's speech was that America's working class is fed up with the biggest enemy in the country, which is corporate greed, where the rich think the people are stupid. He reminded us that this was the time to stand up and speak out and show up, that we, the defenders of the working class, aren't afraid to fight back, and we need someone in the White House who's going to do it with us. Another real highlight of the night was Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who came into the event with such energy and poise. When people say the first night of the convention is all about the rising stars in the party, this is what they're talking about. AOC said Vice President Harris understands the middle class because she's from the middle class. She said, to love this country, you have to love all of its people, not just the people who voted for you or look like you or make money for you, but everyone. Then she made a brilliant comment about how Republicans keep telling her she should leave Congress and go back to bartending, like that is some kind of slur. And she shot back at them and said, I would do that any day of the week because there is absolutely nothing wrong with working for a living. And boy, did that land. I mean, people were fired up. Finally, AOC pointed out that it won't be enough to send Harris and Walls to the White House alone, that we have to have a strong Democratic majority in the Senate and the House if we want them to be able to accomplish their agenda. Then Hillary Clinton spoke, and I have to be honest with you, I cried. Here is this woman who was robbed of the presidency, there watching another woman about to break the glass ceiling. But she comes on the stage with such grace, talking about the successes of Joe Biden and the importance of passing the torch to Kamala Harris. And then she said, we're writing a new chapter in the American story. And she gave a shout out to the women who got us the vote and the women leaders who came before and the almost 66 million voters who voted for the first female presidential nominee, which of course was her. And then she reminded people that even when things didn't go our way, we refused to give up on America, that millions of us marched while others ran for office. And despite our disappointment, we still dream of a better future for America. And she believes that future is finally here. Hillary Clinton pointed out that progress is possible, but it is never guaranteed. And she finished by saying that until the election, we need to work harder than we ever have before because Trump and his allies cannot have our rule of law or our way of life. That we don't have the luxury of getting distracted or complacent. That we have to be out here talking to our friends and our neighbors because we're not just electing a president, we are uplifting the whole nation. Congressman Jamie Raskin echoed that sentiment when he spoke about our corrupt Supreme Court, and he inspired people to get out the vote in such numbers that even Trump and his Supreme Court kangaroo court justices won't be able to steal it. 
And then he called J.D. Vance Trump's pet chameleon, which was honestly hilarious. Texas Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett, who has really made a name for herself lately by taking no prisoners with her personality and her incredible sense of humor, pointed out that every job Kamala Harris has ever had, whether it was district attorney, attorney general, senator of California, or vice president of the United States, she worked for one client, and that client was the American people. While Donald Trump has only ever worked for one client, and that client was himself. She pointed out that this shouldn't even be a competition, but unfortunately it is. And then she told this beautiful story about how when she got to Congress, she was not sure she'd made the right decision, that she found the entire place just kind of chaotic and awful. And the oversight committee that she sat on was a complete mess. And if anyone has seen James Comer's oversight committee in action, we know what she's talking about. She then said she had a meeting with the vice president, who she didn't really know. And the vice president asked her why she was upset. And the congresswoman said she just burst into tears. She said she was just feeling so emotional. And then here was the most powerful woman in the world, wiping her tears and comforting her and encouraging her to stay in. Jasmine pointed out that there is only one candidate in the race who is capable of actual empathy, and that's Kamala Harris. And that we deserve a president who will be a light in a sea of darkness, a president that will pull us forward because we will not go back. I thought the decision to put Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir, a Southern man and a deacon, on the stage to talk about reproductive rights was brilliant. Because after we heard these real life stories of women who had had emotional and heartbreaking reproductive health journeys, one of the biggest responses of the night was when one of those women's husbands standing on the stage said out loud that reproductive health was not just a woman's issue, that it was an American issue and one that we should all care about. And then we finally got to the true celebration part of the night. And Jill Biden came out and she spoke about her husband's humility and his decency, and especially the strength it took to decide not to seek re-election, but to pass the torch to Kamala Harris. And then Ashley Biden, Joe Biden's daughter, came out and told this beautiful story about her eighth birthday when her dad was so busy at work in D.C. But her mom and her brothers took her to the train station that night where her dad got off the train to surprise her. And then her mom pulled out a cake with candles and they all blew them out. And then he walked walked across the platform and got back on the train to DC. She said that's just the kind of dad he was. She said he was the OG girl dad and that he always taught her that she wasn't better than anybody else, but that nobody was better than her. Ashley's words truly brought home the goodness of Joe Biden, a man who would willingly step aside to put country and people first. And you could feel the love in the arena with people chanting, thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. I mean, it felt like the greatest retirement party ever as Joe Biden dug into his administration's extraordinary accomplishments and looked to the future. He talked about how the events of Charlottesville brought him back into the political arena one last time, that he had seen old ghosts in new garments who didn't even bother to wear their hoods anymore. And he knew he couldn't stand on the sideline and watch as a president who supported those monsters went unchallenged. He shared his belief that honesty, decency, and dignity still matter, that he believes in an America where everyone has a shot and hate has no safe harbor. And he said what I say all the time is that we have the opportunity here to become the nation we tell people we are, and we have to take it. That while democracy has prevailed and delivered for the American people, it now must be preserved. And finally, after going through the most impressive years of progress, pointing out that a Harris-Walls presidency would only be able to expand on that progress, he got angry at Trump for constantly diminishing the United States. He said, Trump keeps saying we're losing, but we're not. He's the loser and he is dead wrong. Before he finished, President Biden took the time to address his administration's efforts to solidify a ceasefire in the Middle East and increase the aid to Gaza. He acknowledged that the pro-Palestinian protesters who earlier in the day had crashed through the democratic barricades outside of the building had a point that too many innocent people had died. And he promised to keep working to bring the Israeli hostage home and to end the war. That his ultimate goal was peace and security in the Middle East. President Biden concluded by saying it had been the honor of his lifetime to be the American president. He said, I love the job, but I love my country more. And then he promised to be the best volunteer that the Harris Walls campaign had ever seen. And he finished by quoting one of his family's favorite songs that ends in the words, America, I gave my best to you. And he did. He gave his best to us. The evening concluded with President Biden joined on the stage by his wife, Kamala Harris, and her husband, Doug Emhoff, for one of the most intimate and amazing moments of the evening with our current president and vice president simply looking at each other and Kamala Harris saying quietly to him, I love you. 
Honestly, I love you so much. It wasn't miked. Most people probably didn't even see it. You had to be watching the jumbotron at that exact moment to read her lips, but I was, and it was a beautiful and authentic moment of admiration and thanks. Then the rest of the Biden family came out and everybody cheered and they waved their We Love Joe signs and we all went home. Overall, it was a wonderful night, a long night. And while people might criticize the length of the speeches or the amount of people who spoke, this was the evening that Joe Biden deserved. These are the accomplishments that he has earned the right to be proud of. And we needed the time to honor every single one of them. We really are at a turning point in American history. One party offers us darkness and control, while the other offers light and hope. I hope you will watch the rest of my content this week and realize how important it is to get you and your people out in November to choose the right path forward. Thank you.